I would never cry to a Frank Ocean song. Let's be honest. I am a man. When Frank Ocean first released Blonde, it took over four years of development for him to make it. Anticipation for the record was extremely high, as everyone was waiting to see what Frank would do after Channel Orange, an album that had, in its own right, shattered charts through its new and revolutionary sound. Channel Orange was an amazing and mysterious piece, so it made sense that its successor would take a reasonable amount of time to be completed. As fans waited, Frank spent his time traveling across the globe and working with top artists to craft his new vision. Among a long list of credits, he got help from Andre 3000, Kendrick Lamar, as well as the Beatles, who were sampled on White Ferrari. But collaboration wasn't the only thing that made Blonde's release take so long, as Frank was simultaneously working on pulling off one of the greatest stunts of his life. Like many artists, Frank had found himself trapped in a bad record deal and wanted out. He felt that his label, Def Jam, was neglecting him as they had barely supported him since signing on, and didn't seem very interested in promoting his talent outside of the initial contract they gave him. This contract required that Frank make two albums for Def Jam, and he wouldn't be able to leave them until he fulfilled it. Channel Orange had already completed the first half of the contract, but Frank decided to do something different with the other. Tired of being overlooked, they came up with a plan to escape the contract while also protecting his best work. Rather than give that company a magnum opus like Blonde, he devised a plan to instead offer them a decoy, secretly developing two albums during his four-year break. That way, he could satisfy the label's hunger for a new album, Album while saving Bond for after the contract. That's one of the reasons why Bond's release was so highly anticipated. Fans had waited the time it took to make two albums while thinking Frank was only working on one. The fact that he also was relatively new to the scene made the release even more exciting. At the time, many thought that this super album might be called Boys Don't Cry, but outside of teasers and some demonstrations, no one really knew what Frank was up to. He was keeping the double album plan a secret, not just to be mysterious, but really so that Def Jam wouldn't catch on. The name that Frank chose for the decoy was Endless which he released on August 19th, 2016. Accompanied by a film of him building a staircase, it was artsy, delicate, and amazing, but most importantly, vague in how it was deployed. Frank didn't disclose whether or not this was the album everyone had been anticipating. He needed to keep the hype going, with Endless functioning as an appetizer for the main course. Fans were understandably confused about what Endless was. It sounded great, but something seemed off with the unconventional rollout. Frank wouldn't say whether or not it was his definitive album, so many people were already suspicious. Shocking everyone, 24 hours later, Frank dropped Bond under his own ownership. Because he had used Endless to fulfill his contract, all the proceeds from Bond would now go to him. Now this isn't to say that Endless is a bad album by any means. Some even prefer it over Blonde. But for Frank, it was a secondary project that wasn't meant to define his artistry on its own. With all the hype already surrounding Endless, the crowd quickly shifted their attention to Blonde. It debuted at number one in the United States to critical acclaim, with Time naming it the best album of the 2010s. It quickly became evident that Blonde was a very special album. These songs, though grandiose, have tangible themes in their lyrics that listeners can still relate to. Lines like, that's a pretty fast year flew by, or No Sleep In My Body, are grounded and personal, while the music in songs like Pink and White feels unreachably artistic, having gotten a billion streams on Spotify. It's not a surprise that people in the public gave this album ratings anywhere from 80 to 100%, but if you're like me, the album has a special spark to it that makes it 110. I'm someone who has a bit of trouble falling asleep. It's nothing bad, but I do tend to toss and turn a lot. But back when I listened to Bond paired up with some melatonin, I was living. All I had to do was play it, and my mind would be too occupied with its music to think of anything else. And for weeks, my sleep schedule was amazing. That was until the melatonin caused me to encounter Baba Yaga in my dreams. Then I decided to stop taking it. But before then, this album had a legitimate effect on my life. That's just my personal experience, and there's probably no one else who can completely relate to it. However, what I'm sure a lot of people can relate to is how much they wanted Blonde on vinyl. Now, something about music enjoyers is that when you or I like music enough, we want to express that and get the music out to everybody. Obviously, you can post a song on Instagram, but we all know no one's going to listen to that. So the next best thing is to buy official merch. And what's better merch than a vinyl, which comes with the album's artwork on a large physical scale? Even though CDs and streaming are both technically higher quality sound, the vintage intimacy and art a vinyl provides makes it far more rewarding warning to collect. In other words, it's cooler. Frank Ocean did not immediately release a vinyl for Bond, so there were likely a few questions already about when it would show up. The better the album, the more people will want it on vinyl. So there were lots of people who wanted to buy one. 
It makes sense that Frank would not have vinyls for Blonde ready right away, as Blonde was a very strategic and delayed release. Having not yet pulled off the heist, Frank likely wanted to hold off on vinyl production until everything had gone according to plan with finessing his label. Either way, the fact that there was no albums on release set the precedent that if they did come out, they would probably be in a limited quantity. As it turns out, Blonde would get one of the most limited vinyl releases for an album ever and the famine that would follow its release would go down in history forever. A few months after Blonde released, its vinyl surfaced on Black Friday. The problem was, it was only around for 24 hours and at a limited amount. By now, people had been given time to really digest and get into Blonde, so demand was likely even higher than when it was first released. Frank decided to go with a black limited edition print, and it promptly sold out. After the dust settled, only the quickest of online shoppers had the vinyl now, with the vast majority of people being left empty-handed. And this is where the Blonde mania began. Although to be completely honest, it's more like a sad slow burn documentary. Obviously, if you missed out on the first release, you're going to be bummed out. It's hard to gauge the exact amount of vinyls that were sold, but based on the amount of people that resold them, it was likely around four to 5,000, which is uh, not exactly enough for everyone. This was particularly brutal because of how much people were willing to upcharge for them. Some were already going for hundreds of dollars, but as you'll see, things would only get worse as a slow realization slowly creeped in. If you missed the first release, you could at least cop another one. Surely there would be another drop happening soon, right? Right? Why, why do you look so sad? As it turns out, Frank was not kidding when he made the release limited. And to be fair, there's a lot of people and companies that do, but nope, not Frank. When Frank Ocean releases a vinyl, you better be there. Because if you didn't get this vinyl on that fateful day, you would never, ever see it at a reasonable price again. And you know who probably didn't know that? The poor, naive fans waiting to see if, huh, you know, maybe the vinyl will return next year. Maybe Black Friday 2017. Nope. A year later, 2017 had come and gone, and it had not been issued out since. People had waited eagerly for 12 months, only to be disappointed. And the tyrannical reign of scalpers only grew pricier. Next came 2018, and this was the year that nothing happened. 2019 was a lot like 2018. But more notably, 2020 was the year that the vinyl released people into a state of fear and misery, knowing that it had still not returned multiple years later. Blonde was now well established as one of the greatest albums ever, with the least amount of vinyls to complement that, having still not been sold since those 24 hours in 2016. You could settle for a fake, but you knew deep down in your heart it wasn't the same. If you've collected anything, you know that fakes are obviously not desirable. By 2021, the vinyl was considered a cryptic legend, with a copy going for anywhere between $1,000 to $3,000. Blonde had now joined random access memories and government plates in being impossible vinyls to reasonably own. Every single new person that discovered Blonde during these years probably went to see if any vinyls were available, only to be met with an apocalyptic sight of people that had been wondering the same question for years. It's not really Frank's responsibility to make sure fans can all get a vinyl, but it is still his decision to make more. And it seemed like this vinyl would just never be accessible to 99% of fans, with Frank not having any other reason to release another batch unless he saw fit. Thankfully, by the end of 2022, he did. Frank finally decided to do another Black Friday drop, this time with a white copy of Bond that featured an E and posters inside. The reason for the re-release is anyone's guess. Some people say that Frank decided it was time more people could own an official copy, while other more cynical fans said he just needed a Christmas bonus. In terms of the E and the blonde cover, which previously did not exist, it could either be for artistic reasons or perhaps just to distinguish it from bootlegs. Was there a warning for this release? No. Was there enough copies being sold for everyone? No, but that probably wasn't possible. I didn't know this drop happened until a few hours too late because I don't have Instagram. So I was pretty sad when I missed out on the announcement. But you know who does have Instagram? That's right, my cousin. And so I got it for Christmas. I don't really know how to hold this, but here is the re-release bought at a nice retail price rather than a bajillion dollars. As you can see, there's the E. It also has a poster inside and a lyrical sheet that looks like the production company ran out of ink. Unfortunately, a lot of people were not able Able to get this final. And worse, this re-release had been six years in the making, so who knew how long it would take before you ever got a chance again. I feel like I'm not qualified to speak for the people anymore. Everyone who was asleep during the drop and didn't have a cousin with Instagram were in a very dark place. But fortunately, there is a good ending to this story. Sort of. It's more like a compromise. And that is that last December of 2023, Frank did a drop for the third time with even more vinyls. So even more people were able to get them. You can even still put this 2023 vinyl in your cart on the website, 
fight, but it won't go through. That's just there to jump scare people and get their hopes down, I guess. I'm starting to think this Frank Ocean guy legitimately hates his fans. And just like that, two more drops made the scarcity of an official Blonde vinyl a lot less extreme, with more fans than ever finally being able to have their own. This made Blonde a lot less of an impossible find as they were now much more in circulation. And in my opinion, that is a very good thing. I think we as consumers have been tricked into thinking that this word limited is some golden good thing. I will buy things just because I know they're limited, but it's not as much a luxury as much as it is often stupid artificial scarcity. Companies and artists need to stop making things fake rare, and scalpers need to stop selling stuff for outrageous prices. Please like if you want more videos about music. Thanks for watching, I'm Lufa.